Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and one of the most common video requests that I've gotten over the last several months is, when will you review the Aldi's Love & Fresh Zero Net Carb Bread? Now believe me, I've wanted to. I really want to try out this bread. But every time I go to Aldi's, no dice. They don't have it yet. Until today. I practically have goosebumps now that I got my hands on a loaf of this stuff. And in a way, I'm a little bit worried too because I'm afraid it can't live up to the hype. Now, I'm sure there are a number of other reviews of this out on YouTube. I have not watched any of them because I didn't want to taint this experience. So what you're gonna get here is Unfiltered Steve, just trying out this bread for the first time. In terms of macros and ingredients, we have 45 calories, two grams of fat, five grams of protein, nine grams of total carbohydrates, all of which are fiber for a net zero, hence the name, bread. For ingredients, we have water, modified wheat starch, wheat protein isolate, oat fiber, yeast, wheat gluten, chicory, vegetable fiber, sunflower seeds, soybean oil, wheat bran, flaxseed meal, vinegar, salt, and preservatives. So if you're clean keto, you've probably heard enough to know this is not the bread for you. This has got a little bit of dirt on it between those wheat ingredients and that soybean oil. But if you don't mind a little bit of dirty keto, keep on watching. Let's see what we think. Now this stuff smells like bread. And it's squishy like bread. It's got sort of the moisture of bread. I cut one slice in half. First, we're gonna try it untoasted, no butter, nothing. The consistency and mouthfeel of this, initially, I kind of thought Wonder Bread, but it's not as moist as Wonder Bread. So imagine Wonder Bread that's maybe a couple of days old. In terms of flavor, it is really kind of unremarkable. There's something missing about it that I can't quite put my finger on it that keeps this from tasting like bread. Let's see if toasting does anything to improve it. Okay, toasted with butter. Now, of course, the butter made it taste a little bit better. The texture, however, once you toast this, changes from something that's bread-like to like Cheetos puffs, that sort of texture. It took me a minute to, to figure out what that mouthfeel was like. Yeah, it's totally like the texture of Cheeto puffs or those puff cheese ball things. Also, this will absorb any moisture at all that you have in your mouth. I almost felt like I needed a gulp of water just to get this down, just because it, it dried everything out for me. So my initial impression of this zero net carb bread is it's not a great bread. If you've been waiting for the keto bread that makes you believe you're really truly eating bread, uh, this is not it. So in a way it is a lot like other keto products in that it's a little expensive, like three and a half dollars for a loaf. I think it's got 14 slices and it doesn't really exactly taste like what it's supposed to taste like, in my opinion. But I'm not giving up on it quite yet. I'm gonna do a few experiments with this bread over the course of the next few days, including making some grilled sandwiches and making some breadcrumbs. And once I see how those work, I will render my final verdict on the Love & Fresh Zero Net Carb Bread. So I've been playing around with this Zero Net Carb Bread for a couple of weeks now, and it's kind of growing on me a little bit. It's not. It's not an entirely bad bread. I've kind of dialed in where to toast it to kind of get it perfect. I've made some breadcrumbs with it. However, during the same time period, I've seen a number of comments from people that have said that it either knocks them out of ketosis or it spikes their blood sugar. It has not knocked me out of ketosis. And there have been a couple of days where I've had probably four slices of this bread, but I haven't seen how it affects my blood sugar. And in the podcast from earlier this week, which I can link to right up here, I'll actually link to the actual timestamp, I did a baseline of my blood glucose. I did it before eating a meal that I knew shouldn't impact me, 30 minutes after, 60 minutes after, and two hours after. And I'm gonna do that same thing right now with a sandwich made from the Aldi's bread. 
All right, we'll get our starting number. And we are at an 84. It is currently 1.25 p.m. And now I'm gonna eat a ham and cheese sandwich with some mayo and brown mustard between two slices of the zero carb bread. It's been a half an hour since I finished my sandwich, so now we're gonna do another test. We are at 99, so bit of a bump. I wouldn't call it a spike though. What I gather from reading out on the Keto Mojo site is a spike is generally 30 points or more. We're up just 15, but this is only our half hour test. And just to validate the time, it is 1.57 p.m. We're now at the one hour mark, so we'll do our next reading. And we are only at 94, at 2.27 p.m. Time for the final reading at two hours. And at the two hour mark, we are down to 91. So we're not back down to our original number, but we still are in the zone that Keto Mojo refers to as optimal. So I'm gonna say, for me at least, this was definitely not a blood glucose spike, not a significant impact, really. So what does that mean for you? Not a whole lot, aside from now you know how it affects me. Like I say, whenever I'm doing any sort of a blood test on me, it's only indicative of how it affects me. I believe that everybody needs to take ownership of their own readings. So I encourage you, if you are concerned about how some things may be affecting your blood glucose, get yourself a blood glucose monitor. It can be Keto Mojo, it can be whatever brand you want. If you do decide to go with the Keto Mojo, I will include a link down below in the description for 15% off both Keto Mojo kits and strips. But now I feel comfortable continuing this review. So back to the review, we're gonna try it out on a grilled cheese sandwich. First off, cut into triangles naturally. Okay, that is a solid grilled cheese. I mean, the butter really helps. I'm, I buttered these pretty heavily. I would say probably half a tablespoon on each side. Yeah, I'm gonna say this is very legit for a grilled cheese. This, uh, this is starting to win me over. I just recorded myself trying out some of this Aldi's bread on French toast and the battery on my camera ran out. I don't have more French toast, so right now just imagine I'm eating that French toast. Mmm. Not bad. The texture of the French toast with the Aldi's bread is gonna be a little bit different than what you may have had in the past. For starters, I usually liked French bread using Texas toast, so it was thicker. This is thinner, it's denser, and because it's more absorbent, it sucks in a lot more of that egg wash mixture, and it gets maybe a little bit spongy, but still, it's good enough that if you live in a non-keto family and your other family members are eating real French toast, this is a decent substitute, and it will keep you from looking longingly at their plates. I've also made breadcrumbs with the Aldi's bread by taking the two butt ends off and letting them dry, and then crushing them or running them through a food processor. One of my viewers gave me a great recipe for an Italian breadcrumb mixture that mixes all these bread and some pork rinds and a couple of other things. And I will share that with you, making sure to give him credit, when I do a video on uh, maybe chicken parmesan in the next couple of weeks. So my overall assessment of the Aldi's Love and Fresh Zero Net Carb Bread is as follows. It's a decent keto bread. Are you gonna confuse it for real bread? Probably not. It's better than any bread recipe that I have tried from the internet or YouTube so far. So until I do find a better recipe, this will probably be my go-to for bread. I don't eat it every day. In fact, I go through a loaf slowly enough that I need to refrigerate it to keep it from getting moldy. Like all low-carb or keto products, it's a little on the expensive end at $3.5 to $4 for a kind of small loaf. And if you're clean keto or have any issues with wheat, this bread is a no-go. But if you're looking for something to satisfy your bread craving, it's convenient, it's decent tasting, the texture, not too bad. When you toast it though, toast it only about three quarters as long as you would have toasted regular toast. That's kind of where I find at least to be the sweet spot on this. Also, 
though it didn't affect my blood glucose, that's just me. Your results may vary. So I encourage you that if you do try out this bread, test your blood glucose and see if you have a response. That's it for this review. Thanks for watching.